500 years ago, this tiny little island was home to 100 people known as the Ati tribe. Fast forward to today and Boracay boasts 12,000 permanent residents and 2 million tourists yearly. We came to Boracay for 5 things. The sand. These crystal clear waters. The food. The sunsets. And of course, the people. So let's get this video cracking and show you what it's all about. Starting the day a little differently with these videos because first I thought I've got to show you our amazing hotel. We are staying at Feliz Boracay Hotel and I gotta tell you, unbelievable. We've got this lovely, lovely rooftop pool. It's got a lovely courtyard down the bottom where they have music every night. Now, you might notice something a little different today and that is because there is no Haley. Unfortunately, she's a little bit under the weather today. She might join us for a meal later on, but she's out of action, so today, it's just me. These electric tricycles are absolutely everywhere. Look at them, all around me. I am so surprised compared to all the other tricycles. They're so different to everyone else in the Philippines we've seen so far, but I do need to need to find one. How much to book a shell? Book a shell, 250, yeah. Good. Right, 250 to the beach, let's go. There's a little drop off spot where all the other tricycles are waiting for you to take you back. It's only 8.30 and already a good amount of people are already here. Apparently back before Boracay was closed in 2018, it was a lot busier, a lot more restaurants and vendors on the beach. And then once they reopened, I think they closed. Um, they made it a little bit more quieter, more space for tourists. Lovely, lovely palm trees. I think in front of me are also some of the island hopping tours as Pukashau Beach is I think one of the first stops on a lot of these tours so looks like there's maybe 10-15 boats that have already parked up here already but I'd say right here would be the ideal spot there's not another soul in sight around this area so if you come to Pukashau Beach walk for maybe two three hundred meters till you get these palm trees and I think this is the perfect place to set up for the day. So I wanted to enjoy this view a little bit more so I'm um, getting a shake, a very expensive shake, 250 peso, ridiculous but it gets me this mat, small price to pay for a little bit of privacy on this overly congested beach. Oh this water is amazing, oh my god. So worth the effort to come to this beach. Now that we've seen this beautiful Pukashau Beach. We're now going to jump on a tricycle and head back to station two to check out the main attraction, which is White Beach. Okay, here. Sweet, these guys are hilarious. Bye bye. bye. Absolutely lovely drivers here. 250 back to our hotel. So, D Mall is the main epicenter of Boracay with all the shopping. There's abundance of every type of shop. We've got pharmacies, ice cream, restaurants, massage parlors, souvenir shops, exchange like everything that you need in Boracay is in this area. It's all this lovely outdoor area that you just walk through, kind of circles around this whole area. I think there's like two or three lanes of it. It is a completely contrasting with El Nido and Quran, where we've first been. Those places had like nothing, not very developed. Where this has definitely had a lot of money invested into Boracay, and it definitely shows, but I quite like it. So we have arrived here in White Beach. We are in Station 2, and the beach here is split up into three different stations. Station 1 is their kind of luxury, high-end hotels. Really nice area, but some clubs there. Station 2 is known as the epicenter, as you can see why. There is lots of people here. This is not even busy, it gets super busy later on. And then Station 3 is the more budget friendly area, a little bit more greenery. Right now in Boracay, there is a little bit of algae in the water. So I don't know if you can see behind me, but all along this kind of opening bit, it's all green. 
I'm told that it's all fine, it's all safe, just a natural phenomenon that keeps the white sandy beaches all pristine and clean and white. So I think if you're gonna go for a swim, maybe head up to Pukashau Beach where I was this morning for some better, cleaner water. There are so many restaurants crammed along here. This is pretty ridiculous. I didn't realize it was gonna be so many. I thought it was just gonna be kinda of in station two, but I've walked for a little bit longer and it's just absolutely endless the amount of shops, restaurants, cafes, hotels. I've got to go find somewhere to eat, grab some food. I've done a few Google reviews and I think there's one little spot that I've popped out that really stood out. So I would take you there for a bite to eat. It is absolutely mental how crazy this is. They've got a Galleria department store with like Nike and Adidas here. Definitely not what I was expecting on this small little island in the Philippines. After 20 minutes of walking in this crazy heat, I uh, found our place, which is Noni's. It's like a vegetarian, vegan, healthy, Filipino style food. I'm not really sure Haley actually selected this, but she's sick, so I get to, to try it by myself. So let's go and taste this delicious food. So to start off, I've got a rehydration cold press for 190 peso. Strawberry, mint, watermelon, apple, good go. This is quarter rehydration. I'm so hot and sweaty. This is rehydrating me, it's so good. So I've got a Bistec Tagalog for 490 peso for my main here. We've got braised brisket of beef, Bistec sauce, seasonal greens, buffalo cheese, and a sweet potato mash. Oh my, this looks delicious. The sauce. Mmm, wow, so rich with flavour. The onions are like crispy, so crispy on the edges. The sauce is so rich, worth every penny. Absolutely delicious. I don't know what you Filipinos have put in that Bistec sauce. I think that was one of my top dishes I've ever had. That sauce was just like so rich, a little bit of sweetness. But now I think we're gonna explore a little bit more and then maybe look around the shops and give you a little bit of overview of that. I've managed to pick up a straggler along the way. She is out of the room. She's hungry and I, I say hungry, she wants some ice cream. And there's this place called Halo, was it Halo, Halo, Halo Mango Tree, which has an array of scrumptiously looking desserts. It's arrived, we got this cute little face thing with some choco on the side. It's fallen off, it's mounting. Uka. Oh, oh my god. So soft, so mangoey. They've got the consistency like bang on. The eyes are falling off, gotta eat it fast because it is melting. Oh, that's so tropical. That's so good. I've never had mango ice cream before, but it is amazing. Definitely a must try. So we've gone for a little walk and spoonful confections. And we've got a few donuts, donuts, pastries. First off, we have, what's this, a caramel donut, I think. These were 65 peso for one donut. Oh, mm, delicious caramel donut. No complaints there. Next up, we have the it was like a, a Nepalan, Nepal, Nepalanat, I don't know the name of it. I think it's custard in there, something like that. Soft pastry, gooey custard. Definitely prefer the donut, but oh, it's oozing. Look at that caramel! Oh my goodness. That looks amazing. There's so much caramel dripping out of it. It's so good. We've just come down to White Beach to the waterfront. It is stunning here. We are going to go on the hunt for one of the sailing little things, sunset, parau, par I don't know, is it how you say it? Parau, sailing on the sunset. I think 
we can just walk up and talk to someone and we get to jump on. I have no idea. They were selling them at the hotel, but they were 3,000 peso um, at the hotel, which I think is very pricey. So we're gonna try get a slightly better price direct with the with the crew there. So if you're coming at sunset, they are 30 minute rides. If you do in the morning, they do an hour. So I think it's not as busy. They're just, I think, searching for a boat for us because it is packed. Lots and lots of people. Some guy in the distance has put his hand up. We're on a mission to quickly get to him and the boat before someone else takes it. We are off. We're finally on the boat. We got a little bit of a helping hand to get on because it's quite high. The last of the sun is coming through. We've got our own private boat. We're on this little wire here. Really peaceful experience. I think this is like definitely like the 100% you must do this if you come to Borokai. What a way to end a jam packed day. The sky is gorgeous. Sunset is putting on a show for us. Scotty looks like he is super lax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just need a cocktail in my hand and then we're, we're sorted. Oh, yep, yep, a cocktail sounds good. Alright, we think on our way back now. We will enjoy this last little cruise back to shore and then I think Hayley and I are a bit hungry because we just had donuts, we didn't have any food yet, so we will go grab some dinner somewhere, I think, along the beach or, I don't know, just something with great food. The sun is here and so we are now out and about looking for some food but first we thought we'll bring you back to the Demore area because night time is when it definitely comes to life and all the ferris wheel behind me is now going we've got lots of food lots of people it is busy we're really liking this like the boardwalk along here a comparable place to Borokai for us is probably Batong and Phuket but this far superior here in Borokai because there's no road in between here, it's just, the, it's just the beach straight up to the restaurants and the cafes, which we really, really like. That's one thing I don't really like about Patong. Very family orientated here. It's really nice. It feels really safe. Let me know if this is a genuine fear, but Haley is fearful of standing underneath the coconut trees. She keeps on saying, I am so afraid I'm going to get hit by one. You know, they say more people die from falling coconuts than shark attacks a year. Oh, come so. on, come on. I don't think these are uh, very violent i think we're safe i've been walking under it all day oh no, no and, uh, don't and i'm, trust it. Don't and I'm trust it. No. still alive i think for now for and now. i keep dragging you out from under them after a bit of a trek well past station two around some trees we have found our place which is called myers filipino mexican restaurant looks beautiful stunning not too busy which is what I really like, so we're gonna jump on in here and grab some food. That meal knocked our socks off, at least my socks. So for drinks, I had a Dewata cocktail. Haley got a smoothie, massive smoothie, both delicious, both yummy. And then the thing that I think really blew my mind was the garlic pork dobo. Beautiful dish, and then we got some of their traditional lechon koali pork belly. I can't remember if I'm saying it right. That was also amazing, and then Haley had some pork tacos. Again, triple amazing. So good, so good. This dinner has definitely been the most expensive meal we've had in the Philippines by far, coming to a total of 2,770 peso. If you're ever in Boracay, come and check out Myers. A bit of a hike to get here, but well worth it. We've absolutely loved it here in Boracay. It's kind of blown our socks off, just like kind of everything else really nice it could happily come back here again it's a really good destination if you just want to relax and eat lots of good food and also bring your kids because it's family friendly if you love this video of us exploring Boracay make sure you check out these other videos on screen when we visited some other islands around the world so don't sleep on that subscribe button hit that bell and say hi to us in the next video upside down <laughs>